how can you use technology to become a better sailor? That's the question we'll be asking three-time Olympian Calais Costa, who represented the Netherlands in the 470 class with his brother Sven. Um, first, some introductions. Hi, my name's Andy Rice in the UK and Hamish on the other side of the world in New Zealand. Big day for you yesterday. Happy birthday. Um, how was it, Hamish? Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks, uh, thanks everybody for their uh, well wishes. Now, it was pretty weird with a birthday in lockdown uh, here in New Zealand, still, uh, well, in Auckland in particular, still uh, locked down. We're about 100 years behind the rest of the world, it feels, down here, um, experiencing Delta for the first time. But, um, yeah, another year older, another year wiser, maybe. Um, and did you actually manage to get out and uh, improve your skills on the wing foil? Yeah, that was a good day for me. Uh, I had a, I had a nice a nice wing foil. It's a bit of a festival down at the lake. You wouldn't know there's a lockdown there. And I had a ride on the bike, so yeah, it was a really good day. Yeah, well done. Yeah, so so the, the calories burnt, um, they they outdid the calories <laughs> consumed, did they? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> oh, the calories not. consumed. <laughs> oh, well done. You burnt the candle at both ends. Um, well, let's bring bring in our special guest, three-time Olympian and founder of the uh, the tech company Salmon. Um, hi, Calais. Uh, great to have you on. Where where hi, in the Andy. world are you today? I am in uh, the Netherlands, in Holland, and uh, I'm I'm doing this uh, Zoom call from home. As uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, I brought the kids to school and then uh, did the Zoom call. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, now let's just find out. Um, a little bit about you. Um, j just tell us about um, how you got into sailing and, and where it took you. Uh, well, I got into sailing because of my uh, my dad. My dad was a, a double Olympian in Solings in 76 and 80. And um, uh, as we grew up, we were uh, we had a family cruiser. We cruised all around Europe and uh, my brother and sister uh, were uh, optimist sailors, went to the European worlds, and then at some point I went like, ah, no, I'll, 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 I'll try sailing. And then I went to the uh, Europeans four times, and after optimist, my brother and I started sailing together in 470, and uh, we got into the whole Olympic uh, thing, and we did that for 13 years, competed in three Olympics, uh, had some really great results, um, uh, some shockers as well, uh, finished, uh, got the letter medal, in uh in in beijing uh, and the the hamish was the coach of the british who who took our second spot uh, just in the medal race because we were second going into the medal race and lost it there um and uh, throughout the last four years of my olympic career i was thinking what should i do uh next you know i i i had a passion for technology ever since i was a kid taking uh, apart computers and stuff like that um, and uh, also have a big passion for sailing. And then uh, Derek Cheese de Ritter um, is an a America's Cup winner, Volvo Ocean Race winner, Olympic sailor. Uh, he told me, well, if you want to become a pro sailor, you need to learn a second skill. And uh, the second skill I, I invested my time in was becoming a navigator. And as I became a navigator, uh, I saw there was a lot of stuff out there, but it was all pretty outdated and old fashioned. And uh, I, I was keen on modernizing uh, that. So after the London Olympics, that's where I basically got started to see if I can modernize um, uh, the equipment. And when I couldn't do that with the existing brands, I started my own company in 2014 from a garage. And that's basically how Silmon started. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Um, and did you have a background in electronics? Uh, no. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Google's, Google's your friend. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I must say, like, in the beginning, like, my, uh, my ambition for uh, I'd reach my uh, talent. Uh, and over the years, you know, you start in the, in the attic with the, yeah, just basic knowledge. And then over the years, we've, we've like, I got partners that are, are come from big, tech companies i got my sister involved who comes from running a company and managing a team and like that's all not my skills my skills are like thinking of creative ways how to put technology to use in sailing and uh, i have a great team around me to make that work wow incredible 
Um, and so what did you feel that was missing in the sailing world and what have you done to well, fill that gap? Well, my biggest frustration when, when we were in the Olympic cycles was that like after day of sailing, everything was related to feeling and, and everybody would lie to each other that they were the fastest or they, uh, we were really slow today when you sail really stupid. And there was no real measurable a tangible uh, evidence of what happened on the water um, and um, I did did some attempts to make work GPS stuff and then but my brother thought it was very distracting because he's really a feeling guy and I'm more a numbers guy um, so um, yeah, yeah eventually we, um, we, we let all that go but really I, I felt that there was something missing uh, between the feeling on the water and the data that could be available. Um, just uh, anyone listening in, if you can just make sure if you're, you're, you're not speaking, which is most of you, <laughs> can you just make sure that you're on mute? Because uh, we're just seeing you come, come into screen occasionally. So please just check that your microphone um, is, is on mute. Um, well, it's, it's interesting, Kale, what you say about the, the, the difference um, between uh, you and your brother in terms of how you approach the sport was 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 that a, a a natural thing one of you was was always more a field guy and the other the other one more of a numbers guy uh yeah yeah for sure like when we were measuring masts and stuff he, he was like yeah, no, no, this is this is close enough you know and then i would be like no no, no we need to measure it three times and then we got to take the average and then I, I always was a bit more scientific about it. And he was more like, no, nah, yeah, this is it's about right. Hamish, hey, it should be interesting that, to get your comparison. What was it like with uh, you and Dave Barnes? I think I can guess which one you were. But come on. <laughs> I think we were both a little bit uh, loose, you know, to be honest. Uh, we could have done with, I think if there was a third person out there, you know, in the form of, we didn't have coaches in those days, but it would have been really good to have had someone who's, you know, able to dot the I's and cross the T's with a bit more detail. Um, but, but you know, you, it's rare to get that perfect balance just across two people. Um, if you're in a, you know, bigger group, you're more likely to, to, to pick up, you know, the strengths that you need across the full range. And um, it sounds like, Kelly, you've done that pretty nice job of that and within your business. Um, probably didn't quite complete it within your 470 group. Uh, but like, uh, uh, maybe a no, but and, uh, I, I would have liked to done it a little bit better than we did, but we we got a long way. Yeah, yeah, it's second in the world. Yeah, well, it does sound like you had a good yin and yang thing going. Um, second in the world, second in the Europeans, and as you say, that leather medal, medal, the frustrating fourth place at the Olympic Games as well. I'm I'm interested, Kelly. What what is Sven involved in um, the salmon business? No, no. Sven is actually working for uh, for Hall Spars, <laughs> but he's still in the sailing industry, uh, and he's, uh, he's he's selling masts to uh, racing yards, super yards, and that kind of stuff. Right, right, okay. Um, but, but I'm now now working with my sister, which is quite kind of funny because I worked with my brother for 13 years, and now I'm working with my sister already for five years. So okay. Let's, uh, let's see wh wh which one lasts the longest. Right. <laughs> well, uh, technology is not going out of fashion, is it? It's uh, it's only becoming more commonplace. Um, and uh, yeah, pro probably a bit early in the conversation. But I I think wh what I'm fascinated about is is how things like Strava have have revolutionized the sports of cycling in particular and and running to an extent. So I, I don't know that much about your technology, but I'm, I'm interested to see where where the conversation goes but let, let's carry on with this question of what was missing and, and you, you talked about the fact that um you know you you're out there and 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 mostly sailing up until now has been a feel sport and you know you you sort of feel the force or you don't um but you, you can't put numbers and quantify on it so just pick it up from there yeah well so when we started in 2014 we uh, uh we actually f were fortunate enough that we made this really beautiful displays color displays that were picked up by super yachts, uh, racing yachts, TP52s and that kind of stuff. And uh, because of that, we got involved with all the processors that were used on those boats and uh, all the loads and, and, and uh, keel angles and uh, jacuzzi temperature, whatever. Whatever data is available on a yacht, we basically have dealt with. Um, 
but we also saw a big difference between like two TP52 sailing having a different wind direction, even sailing next to each other because they're slightly different calibrated. And so the data between those boats is hard to compare because they need to be calibrated exactly the same way, but they're never are, the sensors are slightly different. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to calibrate it. Um, and, and we've made automatic uh, systems in our uh, processor to enhance it, but in the end, it's still references and hard to compare those two. Um, so we've done well in the, in the racing yachts, super yachts, and come 2019, we finally were big enough as a company that we could say, okay, we're going to circle back to the passion of dinghies and small boats, and we're going to put everything we learned in the big boats and super yachts into a dinghy product. But the biggest goal is that it's easy to use, not too much fuss with calibration, and the data that comes out of it between two boats sailing upwind needs to be comparable 100% yeah okay um and so we are primarily a, a small boat audience we're um road to gold is all about um people who are passionate about sailing faster um and presumably that's what that's what led you to to where you are today so so what products have you got now that you wish that you'd had in your 470 days well um we we uh we now have like a, a all-in-one sailing computer, we call it, the Silmol Max. I got one uh, right here. And uh, Silmol Max, basically, it's got a 25 hertz GPS in there with a 0 0.3 uh, meter accuracy. And um, that's not only the special thing, because the sensors in there are much better than what was available back in 2012. Uh, but even with the sensors we had in 2012, there was a big missing link. If you wanted to use the GPS data after sailing, you had to get like a USB wire, put it in your computer, download the files, come up with some sort of program to then analyze the data and get some useful information out of it. And then that was just you. What about the others you sailed with? Um, and that process was a big focus for us that we wanted to make fully automatic. So with this product, it's connected to the internet. It offloads all its data automatically while you're sailing if you're online or it buffers it until you get to your hotel room. And then as soon as you grab your phone after sailing, you have an instant report of your, uh, of your day. Uh, and not only of you, but of all the other maxes you sailed with or that were around you in the same class. So you have instant rankings, who was the, performing the best upwind, downwind, etc. Wow. And... Um... So where, where, give us some examples of, of how this is now being used in practice. Are there certain fleets, classes where this is being used on a regular basis? Yeah, so in the moth class, we got over 100 um, Maxis uh, racing. And in the recent moth worlds, um, we, I think there were 40 of them there. Uh, and then it's quite cool because as soon as you get ashore, you see people actually grabbing their phones and start chatting about what happened on the water. Uh, look at the tracks, uh, but also at, at gains, losses, who was fastest, who was slowest. And you see other people running up to them, hey, how do I get involved? And they run off to the shop to buy one. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's... It's, it's really, a, it's starting to become a community thing. And, and that's, um, sailing beforehand was always a sport that is, you do it on the water, you get back ashore, you lie to each other at the bar and you go home. And now we try to have that void between lying to the, uh, uh, at the bar and the next regatta. We want to still be people to enjoy their sailing that they've done and learn from it in between. Yeah, um, there is some comfort in that lying. There are places where you can hide. Um, and I, one of the concerns that people had in the big boat scene in the TP-52s, I'm sure you'll have heard this, is that the, the, the more accurate the technology for measuring what's going on on board and what people are doing on board, the more uncomfortable it becomes for the sailors. So just, so just tell us about that. Sometimes lying is a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, never let the truth get in the way of a good story, I guess. But uh, yeah, yes, but you can still hide your data if you want, but uh, because we still have a privacy setting. But the real data is super useful. And and people go like, our oh, data is the be-all and end-all. No, it's not. 
it's a reference to what you've done on the water. It, it's either to confirm or deny what you've seen and you can replay it on the water or on shore. Don't forget, if you've been, been on the water for seven hours, you've done four races, who remembers what happened in the second downwind of the third race? It could have been the second rep. It's just, it starts to become confusing. So in the case of the moth, are you, well, you, it sounds like you're allowed to have them on board during a world championship. Are, are you actually allowed to use the data? Are you, are you using it as a, as a speed puck? And, and is it telling you how fast you're going upwind as you're racing along? Yeah, so, so the max, you can actually uh, configure any way you like. Um, there's, a, there's a start page in the beginning. Um, I can just quickly show you. Uh, you can ping the line, and it, then it will tell you whether you're early or late and how much uh, distance you have to burn before the start. Um, so it really helps you, guide you to the start at first. Then once the start is gone, you can have all these pages. And what's being used mostly is a speed and heel in the moth so people can actually look at their targets because they know they need to go like 17 knots and they need to have a heel of 30 degrees so they're just looking at those numbers to make sure they're at the right uh, uh, numbers and then some people like to use their compass for tactics um, uh, we have a header lift function to tell you whether you're on a header or a lift uh, th there's all sorts of stuff in there that you can choose and, and for every sailor that's different and so during a, a Moth World Championship or, or any regatta, um, do the rules allow you to, to use this technology in the way you've just described? Yes, and we, well, in the, in the Moth, we're actually even allowed the wind sensor and a load cell, uh, which we uh, are also supporting. We have a Bluetooth uh, a low energy wind sensor and a Bluetooth low energy load cell, which is not released yet. And then you just have all that data as well. You can actually see how much tension you have on your Vang and have repeatable Vang tension. Oh, that's incredible. And, and on a moth where, um, tell us what the target weight is. There's no, there's no minimum weight limit on a moth, but, but every gram counts in a moth. So how much um, weight are you adding um, by having the, having the display and the sensors on board? Uh, the display is 240 grams. Um, so it's not that heavy. It floats, so that's nice as well. So uh, if you lose it, you can still dive behind it. And personally, I don't race with uh, extra sensors. I just use them for training. Yeah. Um, but it, what I'm surprised by is, is it sounds like it's very open in, in the moths. You can, you can have whatever data uh, you, you want. Well, it, it, that's, that's another thing that, that we as a company like to kick in that that idea that you cannot have GPS in your class because um, the moth class is open, the J70 is open. Uh, there's many classes that are open to using GPS, but there's a lot of classes also that are not open to GPS. And, and the biggest um, fight always was it's too expensive uh, and not everybody can afford it. And, and, but the reality is a lot of classes, especially classes where people are, uh, um, yeah, not in trapeze or something, they're even bringing their phones when they're sailing. So they're already bringing a GPS or they already have a Garmin watch that has a GPS. Um, so in a way, a lot of people are already sailing around illegally. So classes should really embrace GPS technology because it can be good for the class. It can be uh, beneficial for the people that are, uh, aiming to become a better sailor in the class and the best sailors in the class they they just have a nice reference but they'll still be the best sailors that's not going to change right okay um so there's a, there's a lot of really interesting angles here I, I love the community aspect of this um it, it sounds like it's it's taking sailing in the direction of um strava that i that i mentioned earlier um but let's open it open up the floor to questions and we got a question from uh, Greg, uh, from a, a board sailing perspective. So, Greg, if you, if you want to come in and have that conversation directly with Kelly, it'd be great to have you on. Hi, hi, morning. Hi, hi there. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Far away, Greg. Nice to see you. So, you're calling us yeah. from Cape Town, are you? Yeah, in Cape Town at the moment. I just also wanted to wish uh, Hamish a belated uh, happy birthday. Sorry, Hamish, uh, didn't realize. I hope you had a good day yesterday. Uh, so, 
Caleb, very interesting. Um, I, as I shared in the in the question, I I really resonate with the ability of using data uh, in meaningful ways. And so I was just really interested to know if you'd you know given any, will you have anything available or given any thought to? I know small dinghies um, and boats is one thing, but be interested to know around sailboards and uh, and any of the windsurfer classes, sailboard classes. If 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 there's been any interest or any movement in that direction, I would be fascinated to understand. Particularly, I wrote down here whether it would be legal um, is one thing. I'm not sure quite what the class regulations would be, but I, I believe GPSs are, are allowed. People must be wearing watches. Um, yeah, just so over to you. Just interested to hear what the journey's been with regards to this particular class of sailing. Well, actually, we did uh, recently, we did uh, uh, IQ Foil Worlds in um, uh, Silva Plana. And um, there we uh, did live tracking of the medal race and every board had a, a max on the board. And uh, that was fascinating. And we, we actually now have um, five national teams that bought maxes to do their uh, analyzing of the IQ foils and training to see uh, what heels will work, what pitch will work. Uh, to really learn how to get the best PMG out of the boards and to, to see how they can improve uh, towards uh, the next games. Okay, that's interesting. So that unit that you showed, is, is that the max? That you... that, that, this is max, yes. Okay, and what, and what does it weigh? And, and, and how, do you, how do you attach it to, to the IQ falls? I'm just trying to think about how you, where you would attach it to a, to a windsurfer in terms of the mast and boom and so on. Um, we, for the, uh, for the finals, the, uh, world sailing didn't want us, didn't want the sailors to be able to see the displays. So right. we mounted them on the back of the boards so the spectators could see it, but not the sailors, uh, and, and yeah. the other sailors could see how fast the guy in front of him was going. Um, <laughs> but, uh, in general, when they're, tr because it's not allowed currently in IQ foil, but they are looking into it to allow it. And, and World Sailing is all for it. It's just the classes that need to put it forward. So whenever a class says, we want to allow GPS, that's it. It's allowed. It's the classes can decide it for themselves. Right. Um, and then the board sailors themselves, they put it just behind the mass step. Right. You understand what I mean? Yeah, well, no, I'll definitely be in touch um, independently with you to just find out some more. And uh, yeah, it sounds very interesting. Um, thank okay, you. I'm happy to, uh, to share some pictures and et cetera, how it's mounted. No problem. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. That, that's uh, superbly fascinating. Thanks, thank Greg. You. Well done. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so so the moth and, the, and then the uh, the boards. I mean, if you, if you can fit them on boats, that... Um, and craft that small, then uh, I guess you can put it anywhere. So maybe we'll talk well, about... Well, actually, we have a lot of kite foilers also using them. So tell us, what, uh, how does that work for them? Where, 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 do, where do they have the display and how does that work? Well, the, the, the whole device is, uh, it's all about VMG. And everybody who's interested in uh, racing around a, a track and knowing how to get fastest around that track that's who Max is for. So it doesn't matter what wind sport you're doing, as long as you're trying to get wind lured, the product is for you. Um, so they mount it on the board as well. And uh, the device calculates the wind from your uh, movements. Uh, and because of that, there's a wind direction. And because there's a wind direction, uh, we can calculate your VMG all the time. And, and so your performance. Um, and if you have two GPS tracks, and a wind direction, you have performance of two boats. It might not be the exact wind direction or the exact performance, but it's comparable com uh, performance between two boats, which is uh, very interesting. And you also see the gains and losses in meters in our app, uh, who's winning and who's losing. Um, so I don't know, David, if that's answered your question. You, you ask, how does the Salmon Max calculate VMG? Does it need to know the location of the mark you're aiming for? I think... We just no, it doesn't. Kelly, that, that, yeah, doesn't. No. But David, if you want to come in and ask any additional questions, you, you're very welcome. Um, John Emmett makes the comment, Torben will be unhappy. Um, mm -hmm. So there is there is a drive uh, by Torben Grail and 
world sailing generally i would say to to try and um well there's a number of issues here but one is to to make olympic campaigning more affordable to remove the advantages of the large nations compared with the smaller nations um and there's also an environmental drive about getting the number of coach boats boat coach boats off the water so Kelly you it sounds like you you're already on good terms with world sailing where where do you see the future of the the salmon product in the olympic classes well we are uh, launching a tracker uh, next year as well um that will do all the same but uh, it will allow live tracking of regattas and racing it will allow for live scoring of regattas and racing um but it also will allow for live storytelling of regattas and racing because right now it's nice to have a tracker of a race, but a race that takes an hour, people look at it for two minutes and then they go and do something else. What they're really interested in is the mark roundings, uh, some cool footage. They just want to consume it in a few minutes and then it, then they'll be happy to watch the race. And what's happening today is that a lot of the races are you know, there's a regatta at the Moth Worlds. They make this beautiful video, some nice footage, etc. but it has nothing to do with the racing. It's just some nice sailing footage. What we want to do is relate the data and media with um, uh, the regattas as well. So really create a social network around regattas and, and, and sailing related content as well that you can, uh, that will be presented to you only when you're interested in it. Right. Okay. So um, you might as well carry on down that line. I mean, this is this is completely sort of rewriting the the way that we present the sport by the sound of it. Well, so. well, but but the, the most important thing and the, the drive to do this as well is to make sure the sport grows, and the sport has been in a decline because kids they we lose kids at an age of 16, 17 to other things in life because it's it's too analog in some way sailing and and we believe by making it more digital uh, we can can keep uh, uh, kids more into the sport and also by making the sport a bit quicker and smaller races shorter races um yeah more people will be able to do it well there's there's so many um things to dig into here with you Kelly. but um something that hamish and i both feel strongly about and and maybe because we're both of a certain age where there wasn't much coaching available um even hamish as one of the top coaches in the world feels that kids are overcoached. i think that's fair to say hamish um in in countries like yours and mine new zealand and and the uk um self-reliance is is what um road to gold is all about um about understanding how you set out your own path and you make your own decisions and yes you you can work with a real coach um but um as hamish tells the story of um, well you can you can remind us of the story of uh, ben ainsley when you brought him in <laughs> just tell us hamish yeah well it's certainly the driving as you say the driving force behind road to gold is to give people the means to uh, to take control, take the reins, um, and, and drive their campaign forward uh, with a really good understanding of the areas they need to work in. And yeah, I always laugh about Ben because he's a good friend, and and I got him to come down and chat to Dan, uh, who, my son, who was off to the Optimist Worlds, and and the group of sailors around him who were doing a training camp, and he was over for dinner. So we we quickly whipped down before dinner, and I didn't prime him at all, but. He couldn't have said a better thing. He said to these old kids, he said, look, guys, whatever your coach says could be wrong. And when I was your age, setting an optimist, I realized very clearly like a aha moment that uh, I needed to, you know, to take information from where I could get it, but I needed to drive my campaign forward. Uh, and as we know, the greatest sailor of all time uh, started to think about it right then at age 14 and and the optimist. So I think, you know, it's a really good lesson for everybody. You know, we need to look uh, everywhere for our information, but we need to, we need to run, you know, we need to run our own campaign, um, taking, you know, taking the best parts of everything. And it sounds like, uh, you know, we're getting some great information here from Kelly and Salmon. I'm still a little bit, um, I'd like to know a little bit more detail. I've got a few questions as well. Um, I know the, the Max, it, it can do, it sounds like it can do a lot of a lot of things. So, in order to um, 
keep it within different rules, are you able to disable some of the activities so it can comply? So if you if you have a class that just allows GPS, you can uh, you can disable other parts of the device to comply. Uh, or how does that work? At the moment, uh, we can disable the GPS entirely, uh, and then it's just a compass and uh, heel and pitch. Um, we cannot disable the start function yet, um, but it's 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 something we are considering. But on the other hand, next year we will also have the puck, and the puck is blind completely. Uh, you just put it on your boat, and you will have access to all that data afterwards, and it's live tracking. So I think that product is more suited for classes that just want to have uh, the learnings, but not the, the, the tactical benefits, so to say. And um, if you want to learn a little bit more in detail, I, I could have a, a little, uh, sh I can show you the app and, and show what's available there from um, um, yeah, a racing perspective. Yeah, so because just, the, um, just the, the, the full, limits of your maps you know like uh, clearly you can have wind um it can you can have inputs what are all the inputs you can have if you wanted the full rolls royce on your little i don't know melgy's um sports boat um, well if you, you want to have one. the if you want to have the full rolls royce you can even have our processor that comes from the the super yachts and big boats and have it speak to max so you don't have to buy any expensive displays. You just have the smart processor and you can attach any sensor you can dream of. Right. That's the full Rolls-Royce. Rolls if you just want to have the wireless standalone, um, then it's the device itself has got GPS, um, very fast and accurate. Uh, it's got an IMU for heel and pitch, a compass, and then over Bluetooth, you can attach um, a wind sensor and then it will calculate uh, uh, wind direction, wind angles, etc. Of course, it doesn't have a pedal wheel, so it is calculating. Um, well, it's it's Silmon wind because it's not ground wind, it's not water wind. It's a wind that you can use. Um, and um, the next thing we will uh, enable is the load cell. That's the Rolls Royce for dinghies, basically. Um, the other thing that we will uh, allow on Max is the, the AI that calculates your wind direction from all your text. Um, so then you don't need the wind sensor. It will give you a wind direction and wind angle based on your own movements, which is, can be very useful for your header lifts, for your performance. So we'll actually give you a performance number while you're sailing based on the best in your class. So you're doing 83% of the best of your, in your class right now. And how do we determine that we're not comparing you with the guy at, uh, who's sailing at 30 knots while you're sailing at 15 knots? And that's because we're using VMG uh, lines to determine which is light wind, medium wind, and heavy wind. So you have a basic references of where you want to go. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. Um, Hamish, I to take in there. Hamish, I got the impression that um, working with Pete Burling and Blair Chuk, that um, you didn't go too far into the technology route. Um, and, and so tell us how far you did go and, and sort of where you think the line is between where technology is useful and where it becomes a distraction. Yeah, and I think um, the technology is often a great motivator um, in order to you know, keep keep going in the class. You know, so I think you know we always talk about it in Road to Gold. You know, there's there's a lot, a lot of priorities when you start off in the class, uh, technology and, uh, and and looking at the silver bullet, searching for the silver bullet is a distraction uh, and a low priority. But as you get you know further advanced in that class, you're often looking for uh, ways to stay motivated, ways to reasons to get out of the water and test stuff, and that's when you know, testing things and, and developing equipment becomes a real motivator to go sailing and get better. So it just has its place. It's just further down the line, further down the road. <laughs> and I, I can see yeah. that you know, if, 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 Pete, if Pete and Blair had more time, we would be in, all over technology. We'd be looking for things, you know, we've been, we're, they're always searching uh, for more speed and technology can provide the, the answers to that. 
Yeah, and technology also, and, and that's, I think, important to say, like in TP52 world, America's Cup world, the amount of manpower needed to analyze the data is enormous. A regular sailor will do that. If it would be available, they'll do it once. And then they go, this is so much work. I never want to do this again. And this is one of the things that we don't want. We want you to come off the water, grab your phone, and have a quick insight, which does 80% of what you would have done in two hours of analyzing your data with a professional team. And I think we've succeeded pretty well on that with the, uh, with the app. It better be really good to hear more about, uh, Kelly. You know, how, how do you do that? So what is the app, you know, when you come in, you grab your phone, just go, you know, go, go through the useful uh, discussion that you would have looking at that data. Let uh, me see if I can just uh, share my screen. You guys see my screen now? Yeah. So uh, here you see um, uh, our app. Uh, the data you're looking at is uh, the uh, Moth Worlds. Um, so here you can see my top speed was 24.1. I sailed 37 miles and I sailed for uh, four hours and 58 minutes. Uh, then you go into the detail of that report. Uh, you can see again, my top speed. And if I look at that, you can also see that some other guys were going slightly quicker. So I, I better get some new foils, it seems like. Um, and then I'm in 13th. Uh, so that's a bit frustrating. Um, then you can also look at upwind performance. So upwind performance is based on how fast you're moving directly into the wind. We call this VMG or velocity made good. Uh, you can tap on a ranking and view how it's calculated. So then if you look at Kyle Langford, uh, you can see he's doing an angle of 51 degrees and a speed of 18.5. Um, and if I look at myself, I got some work to do because my angle is 54 and I'm doing a speed of 16.4. Um, so you might be asking, how do you come to all this data? Um, this is based on all your good tags that you've made over the day. And we've got an algorithm to detect good tags from bad tags or when you're going from reach to reach, that doesn't count. And we take the averages of all the different wind um, um, uh, brackets and we show the, the average here. And that's how you're being compared with uh, your fellow sailors. Uh, we do the same for downwind. We do the same for the fastest 500 meters or miles sailed. Um, then um, let me see. You can also look. Oh, let me just go back here. You can also look at the full activity. And it just needs to download that full day then. And then you go, okay, what, what did we do that day? Um, of course, I'm running the beta now. Let me just go to the, to the actual live app. It's a bit better. Um, so we cut the, the activity into legs uh, already for you. So if we go into leg four, it will just show you leg four. And you can run through that leg and go, oh, that's cool. Did I sail with anybody else? Yes. Um, who did I sail with that day? I know that Nathan Outreach was out there as well. And it will just add him to the equation. And we will soon get into a start. So then in here, you can see this is the start of a race. And you can see this is the exact start. You can see the distance between us is three meters. And as we're going up wind, you can see, uh, damn it, Nathan is faster than me. He must be spending a bit more time in the boat. And um, well, I gain a bit back when he tacks. I lose again a bit when, when I tack. And then we get around the top mark. And you still see him, how far he is ahead when I finish my leg. But the time of the, the leg is 300 meters ahead. Interesting. Well, why is he that much faster? You can you can then zoom in to the data and just look at this little part where we're both sailing on the same tack. So, okay, so the different in speeds. Okay, he's going just 0.4 of a knot faster. But what about the heel? Is he having more heel than me or not? 
Um, and, and this way you can really look at all the variables and where do I need to improve? Do, do, do I need to have more heel? Well, it seems like uh, Nathan is constantly having a slightly more heel. Okay, I need to work on having more heel. Maybe that will help me in my speed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we can also just go to another sailor and compare with, with the more somebody like-minded, somebody of my own level. So I can compare with him. Um, yeah, and that's really how we uh, do all the comparison in the regattas. We also have an overall ranking of all time, which you can filter on, uh, on time. Um, so I'm quite interested actually who uh, sailed how many miles this year, because I've got the idea that I'm not training enough. So then you can see, oh, this guy sailed 1300 miles. How does that compare with me? Oh, I've only done 300 miles. No wonder he's beating me in every race. Now, that's a bit the idea behind the app. You really get into uh, details of things. And then for a bit more fun, we will soon launch something we call Silmon Stories. Um, and that's basically you, you've sailed for a day and you've made some pictures. And you go like, okay, this was the top mark rounding of a regatta. Nice. I was watching a race where my brother sailed. So will he be there? Yeah, there he is. I'll just tag him in the picture. And I can then instantly add his speed to what he was doing there as well. And it's all correcting the media with the data. And then I just share it to the story and he'll be notified that he somebody made a picture of him with all the data in it. And of course, this now starts with pictures. But the next step is that you also add video. Um, so in a nutshell, you... that's the app. Well, that's incredible. Um, can you can you integrate um, GoPro? So if you've got GoPro fixed to the back of the boat on the boom or wherever, can can you integrate that with uh, the the salmon? Uh, uh, yes, it's it, it's all about um, uh, GPS uh, related. Uh, so if we have GPS data in the timestamp in the, in the video, then it works great. Uh, we've done some tests with, with third-party cameras. Right now, the, the most reliable is using the, the camera of your phone. But um, yes, we are intending to make that all work, yes. Okay. Um, and on slower boats, um, let's say, let's take the Optimist. Um, how, how much has it been used on the Optimist? And do you see similar um, sort of performance differences of the kind you just showed in the mock? Yeah, yeah, I think we've got like 30 optimists using it. I have to look into it. But, um, and yes, you get re upwind results. Downwind results are very hard to calculate for us because you're going in a straight line. Um, there are no jibes. Uh, but upwind, yes, you get performance differences and you're learning from it as well. Of course, the, the, the differences are smaller. But because we have such an accurate GPS, it's very useful. And um, one of the reasons why I think Road to Gold has resonated so well since we launched it is, is partly because of the pandemic and the lack of regattas. Um, how much has, has that affected your business positively or negatively? Um, it's affected us negatively on the big boats and super yachts uh, because a lot of the yards were shut down, boats weren't built, uh, project postponed. Um, but because we launched Max in November 2019, uh, it, all that was actually um, uh, the loss was covered by Max. So we actually uh, grew in 2020 as a company. And then this year we uh, grew, doubled uh, uh, revenue again. So we are actually growing uh, quite quick uh, because this year also the element range and the, the processors have been uh, uh, growing again and Max have been growing so uh, yeah it's, it's been great we now have a uh, 1500 users uh, worldwide with Max sailing and it's uh, it's growing every week. Uh, Piotr has got a question Peter uh, sorry if I can't pronounce your name correctly um, if you'd like to come in and ask your question directly because it's a it's a very um, interesting question uh, when you're trying to break into a, a new class um, what if I I'm the only one in my class that has a device on my boat. So we always like to get you asking directly, Pietro, can you join us for that? 
Yes. Um, what do you sell? So, uh, we sell Corsa. This is a German um, double double handed dinghy. Uh, it's quite close to 470 and it's uh, completely analog so far and it's very much um, uh, conservative so uh, which is which is good because there are many sailors who can afford to sail it uh, without spending huge amounts of money uh, but uh, it doesn't allow uh, GPS so far and uh, I was thinking about a black box which I could use to uh, to learn how to sail better uh, but the, the problem is with comparison and uh, that's the difference between uh, Moth and, uh, and our class, because if I use it, all right, but I have no, uh, no one else to compare to. So uh, is, there, is there any way to work it around? How, how can I uh, just learn from my own experience? Um, what do you suggest? And yeah, if, if this makes sense, what I said. <laughs> Well, if you're sailing by yourself, you can still aim to get your VMG up every time you go sailing. So you're still getting personal bests. But of course, it will be better to compare with somebody else and to get other people involved in your class. So, so you, you said <coughs> you said that this, you, you're you're going to launch um, some some sort of a. Um, Trucker, which is blind, so I, I cannot see the uh, the compass, or or I can or I can use uh, the the max, but uh, uh, just turn off some of the functions and and make it legal uh, for the for the class. Because if we if we can use GPS, let's say, um, so, so if if I turn off other functions. Um, then, then it could could go uh, to be legal. I'm thinking about introducing in in the class, or just trying to convince the class to to, to use such a device. So, what do you well, say? Well, uh, we as a company are very happy to uh, at class meetings or or something give a presentation and tell the class why it's a good idea to allow GPS in their class, because with you what you've just seen. Uh, they also create classes, create a community where people go and share their experiences on the water, even when they're not sailing together. So it will actually help their class grow. And classes are all about existence as well. And if there's no uh, data and no uh, regattas going on, like there are not so many right now, uh, you can still have stuff going on. And I think that's great for classes. Good. Thanks. So I'll think about it and I'll try to convince them somehow. <laughs> yes. All right, then let, let us know if you need help. Kelly, is it is it possible for a um, a class to sort of hire a, a bunch of um, Salmon products from you so that everyone can sort of use it for the week? Um, now you start no. talking about commercial things. You need to call my sister. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll have a, we'll have another conversation about that, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I think there are plans like that. Yes, uh, uh, but how it exact, exactly works, I'm not entirely sure. No, no, fa fair enough. Um, uh, we've got a couple of other questions, uh, Damien. You've got a question about um, optimist sailing. So, Damien, if you want to come in and ask that question directly, it'd be great to have you on. Let's see if we can get you in. And if we can't get Damien, I'll just give Damien a little oh, yeah. bit. Of she's, she's on mute. Oh, there we go. There you go. Hi, yeah. My son was just a little bit scared to go on. Um, <laughs> with the Optimus sailing that you mentioned just before, I'm just curious as to how they were using it and when they were using it. Um, that's all, pretty much. Uh, um, I, the, the, the use case I know about is in Greece. Uh, they were using it. They just put it on the, on the bench. We put the, the, the mast and they were doing races uh, with each other. Uh, and I think you can even download the app right now and look up Optimist and you'll find the tracks and you can see uh, what they were doing. 
Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. No worries. Thanks, Damien and his mum. Um, and uh, Iris, or Iris, not sure how to pronounce your name, but um, um, you've got an interesting question about integration with um, foreign hardware. So, um, Iris, if you're around to ask that question also, I think interesting for a lot of people using other technology and how easily integrated it is. So let's see if you're there to ask the question. Yeah, hi. Uh, I think my, my wife was, was using uh, the app the last time, so it's her name. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. What's, what's um, your Janice. name? Janis. Janis. Nice, to, nice uh, to meet you, Janis. Can we get you on video at all? Do you have video? Uh, no, sorry. No, no I'm problem. Working. Ask away. Ask away, Janis. Um, yeah, so very, very interesting, especially the analysis. So I'm, I'm working in professional motorsports. I'm quite used to the problem of uh, actually making use of all the data re you record. So I was wondering if it's possible to um, to use the app and the analysis with data acquired by, by foreign hardware. So, I mean, there's a lot of devices um, out there that record GPS tracks. No, that's not possible because uh, actually in order for us to do all the analyzing of the uh, performance, the wind calculations, etc., cetera, um, we need to have all our sensors that are in the max. Okay. Because we're doing more than just looking at the GPS track. There's an, a proprietary algorithm that's doing all sorts of magic to come up with a wind direction. Yeah, clearly. So it would be definitely less of the functionality, but also just it, it, having so part it of it would be, be interesting. It wouldn't be completely impossible, but you won't be, you wouldn't get performance data. And uh, we, we used to have, um, in the app, we would have had tracking. So we used the GPS trackers of phones and we simply found that they weren't accurate enough. Uh, and you, you'd be comparing apples with pears because a Samsung has a different GPS from an iPhone and it's just not the same data. And it's, it's yeah, that's not what we want. Okay, understood. Thank you. All right, thanks for that, Yanis. Um, and uh, we, we did have a, a, a very technical question about 470s early on uh, from Pietra. So um, that probably isn't so relevant to this uh, to this conversation. So I won't go there because we haven't got a lot of time left with you, Kelly. Um, the other thing that Hamish talks about on Road to Gold a lot is you, you can pretty much square away most of the things that you need to do to get to the very top level of Olympic campaigning without actually doing big regattas and reg big regattas should be the icing on the cake and people have been forced into that situation in the last 18 months anyway so so just tell us um, if you're aware of any small training squads sort of uh, four or five boat squads that are using um, Salmon because that is the sort of the, the road to gold way of training. Oh, there's, there's lots of them. Uh, um, I think we've got like 10, 15 Olympic teams that are using it this way. Uh, we've got like in the moth class, we've got different chapters of people who are doing this. Um, J70s. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, everywhere. Because if you, if you download the app, you can see uh, every day new reports come in and you can see these groups train together. Because as soon as you go into the app and, and look at a report and you press the compare button, you see how many boats of the same class were sailing together. Um, now, we're, we're all about sharing knowledge and sharing information as much as possible. That's in your interests as well for social media and marketing purposes. But for those that want to keep their data within a closed group, you can do that as well, presumably, can you? Yes, there absolutely. There is a private uh, functionality. Uh, but there's also a penalty for that because then if you are private, then you cannot be in the rankings either. So there's, there is a penalty. Right. Right. And, and what kind of feedback are you getting from these, uh, training groups in terms of, um, how much is it enhancing, uh, their training and their sailing experience? Well, I, I think in the, in the replies, I did see one guy uh, saying that he's used the max, but, um, in general, it's very positive. People, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be saying if it's all negative either, but uh, no. But get, get, like, yeah, so course, yeah, obviously you're going to say that. Of course, there are what, people. What? Of course, there are people that are uh, uh, they they find it too difficult or whatever. 
but uh, this in general it's like 95 or 98 percent positive and two percent negative which makes me really happy and i haven't only done multi events we've also recently done some national classes here in the netherlands and and, and presented them what they can do with it and they love it and and that's uh, that's what it's all about because it's not only about the olympic classes it's, it's not only about the moth class it's about the entire sailing community. Lambert, yeah, Kelly, uh, one question for me is, what's your vision, you know, like your, your grand vision um, going forward, you know, the, the sort of the, the rainbow at the end, you know, the pot of gold. Um, have you got, have you, are you going day by day or have you got something that you're working towards? Uh, we want every sailor in the world to use Silmon. It's just it should be on every boat because then you will have that community and it's it, it should be like Strava is in cycling for right. sailing. And and the capacity you're analyzing, you I imagine that the, everything's coming back on the internet. If I've got this right, and your company is analyzing that data coming in from Peru and from you know wherever it might be, it's all arriving in your computer, and then you're sending <laughs> back to the yeah. Yeah, so the, the device itself uh, is completely independent from the app. You, yeah. you just scan the device once and then it's attached to your boat. From that moment, the device, whenever it gets an internet connection, it just offloads its data. It's yeah. doing that actually all the time. And the device itself uh, doesn't, doesn't mind which boat it is. But on the server, we then know it's a moth. And we need to look at it as a moth because a moth behaves different from an optimist. And so we can make chocolate from the data. Because if you selected it to be an optimist and you go sailing with a moth, your report will be shit. Uh, because it, it, we can, you, you'll uh, exceed the maximum speed and all sorts of stuff will happen. Uh, because the server is really smart. It will look at your data and go like, okay, where were you on land? Where were you on water? We cut off the pieces that were on land. Uh, if there's a gap of 10 minutes, we make two separate activities. Uh, were there any people around you? Okay, we'll show that and them as well. And you don't have to do any of that. That's all done on the server. And then as soon as you grab your phone, it's just there. Right. Um, and there's no um, going to be no problem with growing that. You're not going to find any trouble with, uh, you know, if there's a suddenly a thousand more users. No, 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 no. We have a, at the moment we have a thousand active users uh, that are using it every two weeks, uh, and that's growing every day. But we are working with scalable servers. We're, we're not having a server in our office or something. It's we're just using big server farms, so we can just say, okay, we'll need a little bit more power. Copy. Thank you. Right no works. We're we're getting some requests for for follow ups. Um, here, Kale. So, um, so Greg's asking, what's the best way to follow up with you to find out about products? And Pietra's asking if you'd like to come to a regatta and present the product. So, uh, so where do people go from here? Uh, if you just send an email uh, to max at silbon.com, uh, people in the office uh, will make sure that uh, you'll get an answer and the right answer and see what we can do uh, for you guys. I've just yeah, dropped, dropped that into the chat box, max at salemon.com. <coughs> so um, hopefully I've, I've got the email address correct. Um, you do. David, um, you want to talk about your intended use of the max training coaching idea? That sounds fascinating. Um, we're running out of time, but let's see if yeah, we can so do Yeah, and my, my previous question was answered. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm buying a new boat. Never used it before, never sailed it. It's a foiling uh, catamaran. It's coming with a Max and the wind sensor. The guy that sold to me sold it to me lives in Germany. He's a developer. I fly 15. That's it. So I'm going to send, every time I go for a training session, I'm going to send my data to Michael and say, hey, Michael, what do you reckon? How did I go? How's this look? Um, how can I do better? So, yeah, it, it'll be a stunning device. I, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it. So he can he can just use his phone to see my data of all my sales. You, you don't have to send it to him. You just That's have to right. make sure that, that your device gets online after you sell. Yep. 
so yeah, it should be. I can't wait to play with it. it should be great. Cool, David. Thank you both very come? much. Sorry. How, how long do you have to wait? Ah, oh, I've been waiting for too long. COVID's ah. impacted suppliers and everything, but December, hopefully ah. December. Nice summer. Yeah. So David, thanks. Well, ho hope we can keep you entertained between now and then. Um, yeah. So. Um, oh, we've got another. Is this the same, David? Um, are there plans to make Max more economical in terms of cost? Well, actually, yeah, that's a good reminder. Um, Dave, I'm assuming this is a different David to you, David, that's just been on. Um, but, yes, different. Um, yes, da other David, if you'd like to come in and just ask your question. Um, it, and we haven't asked you about costs. So, so Calais, give us the, the baseline costs if, if we want to buy a Salmon Max for ourselves. Um, in Europe, it's 899 euros. Um, and to answer the question about cost, uh, the, the, the puck uh, will be cheaper. So the, I'm not sure, I, I cannot say a number right now, but we're aiming for it to be as cheap as we can make it because uh, we, we want to have as many users as we can because we believe that having the community will make it work. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, maybe more conversations with your sister about whether you can hire units as opposed to buy, buy them outright. So we'll, we'll come back to that another time. And there was an interesting question, which I, we haven't got time for now, unfortunately, about uh, Lamberto talking about using Max and, and analyzing along with Salnjord. And, and I know Hamish knows a little bit about Salnjord, and that sounds like- Yeah, I, I, I've done that as well. Uh, and and uh, Salnjord is a great program. Yeah, so so there's there's a lot coming together. But what, what I love about your approach, Calais, with technology is a, a bit like the way that Steve Jobs and Apple approached it um, with their technology. You, you understand that the bottleneck here with technology is always the um, the human being. It's the human factor, and and most of us are are not propeller heads. We we need stuff that's simple, and um, you know you that eighty twenty rule. We want to get. 80% of the benefit for 20% of the effort. It sounds like that's what Salmon is focused on and doing very effectively. Um, exactly. Hamish, any, any, any final um, thoughts from you before we wrap up the, uh, the conversation today? No, that was a great summary. And thank you very much, Kelly, for coming on. I know you're a really busy guy and so much appreciated. No worries. Well, Kelly, thank you, you for having me. You're, you're right in the market um, with Road to Gold Web. People are passionate about um, that last few percentage of um, percentage points of speed. So uh, I, I hope that you get great value, um, and I, I think we should be doing a lot more together as well. By the sound of it, I, I think it's uh, it's very interesting what you're up to, and your your vision for the sport is is inspirational. Um, so I can see this is a whole lot more about technology. It's about bu building the community as well. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, I really enjoyed this session. I, I hope everyone watching has done as well. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Calais. We'll get you on again sometime, I hope. Um, and uh, Yeah, just for sure. Yeah, wh when are you going to be on your moth next? I, on Saturday, but let's see. I've got three kids as well. So that's 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 my bottleneck to go sailing right now. <laughs> right. Uh, because they, they are great and they deserve attention as well. Uh, so, yeah. Great. Calais, there's so much more we could have talked to you about, your ice yachting and everything else. Um, oh, yeah, that, that as well. Yeah. We'll do that another time. Um, so, so thank you very much, Calais Costa. Um, and we will see you all again next week. We've got another great guest uh, coming up in the middle of next week. So we look forward to seeing you then. But um, have a great week, everybody. And... Uh, um, look into salmon.com a little bit more if you were inspired by today and we will see you soon bye for now All right.